Hey everyone, it's Eric One. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're gonna be unpacking, exploring the linking game. What it is and how to use it to uncover some new patterns, some new discoveries, some new insights into your personality so that hopefully you can be more yourself on your YouTube channel. I've talked a lot on this channel about putting the pause button on that pressure to find the perfect YouTube niche. And instead, let's take the slow, more practical, reasonable approach. In order to really stand out on YouTube, design that perfect fit, you need to really know who you are, what you're bringing to the table, and often to really get a three-dimensional view of who you are, what your superpowers are, you need to dig around for clues, fragments of clues, in unexpected places. That's exactly what today's Lincoln Game is all about. Let's stretch our boring definitions of ourselves to try to see ourselves in completely new ways. Oh yeah. All right. All right. Ow. 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 All right, so what am I talking about? Well, the idea is instead of looking for clues in the normal places, let's look for clues into how you like thinking, how you like seeing the world, how you like making decisions in this world in the really weird places, in the really random, unexpected places, the places that look useless, the places that look boring in your life. Then ask yourself why that might be happening. Theorize a little bit. It might seem dumb or pointless at first, but what if there is actually something there? Next, I want you to think about how what you like doing is different than what other people like doing. Maybe you are more particular than you think. What does this mean? Practice taking weird, unexpected things and linking it to some deeper patterns, some deeper insights into yourself. I promise you, you're gonna start noticing some new stuff. Pattern, why? Is this different? What does this mean? All right, so those are the basics. That's the linking game. But I think we need some real life examples. First, let's start with an easy example. The way I like peeling these oranges. What, how could the way we peel our oranges ever be insightful or interesting? I don't know, let's see. <laughs> That's the whole point of this exercise. You've probably never thought of that before. Maybe it's completely useless, or maybe there's a really interesting connection pattern there. Whenever I get one of these, I always try peeling the skin off in one piece. I always do it. Doesn't matter if it's a big orange, a small orange. I tend to do it like this every single time whenever I get these little orange things. I also have this tendency to sort of eat the entire bag whenever I buy one of these things. <laughs> these things are not very satisfying. So while I'm working, while I'm watching a movie, I usually get distracted and just start popping these things in my mouth and the entire bag disappears. Filming and eating, not a good idea. I tend to go with big chunks enough to actually taste like something, but small enough where I'm not eating the entire orange in one bite. I also know if I don't finish it in one sitting, the chances are really high I'm gonna forget that bag of oranges even exists, and the amount of molded orange bags I've had in my time are a lot, and so I've learned to just like not buy them. All right, so whenever I notice something like that, a little pattern, I write it down in my head. I store it away going, okay, this could be useless or there maybe, maybe there's something there. Let's think about this. Ugh, these are sour. I literally only got these for the analogy. At first that pattern seems pretty useless because I mean, a lot of people peel their oranges like this. But then I start noticing how other people peel their oranges and I go, wait, why the heck are you doing it like that? Some people are slicing them. Some people won't eat it because it gets their hands dirty. Some people are picking off all the pieces in little chunks. Some people, they really peel every single slice, eat it one at a time. Just getting little pieces, there's like, juice splurting all over the place. And I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, there's so many pieces. Are you really gonna pick up all those things? Some people are not thinking about it at all and it's completely random every single time. Maybe we have more preferences than we think. Maybe we're more particular than we think. Maybe our personality is spilling out into all these different areas of our life a lot more than we think. I like doing this because it's efficient. I like getting around how inconvenient these things are. I know I'm forgetful, so I eat the entire bag. I know the mess finding these little orange peels randomly in my room is gonna irritate me, so I peel the orange like this pretty much every single time. Also, the challenge of peeling these things off in one piece, it's sort of fun finding the best technique to make this happen every single time. The fingerprints of your personality are in really unexpected places. I love playing this game with everything. People, interactions, emotions, thoughts. Why did I say that? Why did I think that? Why am I reacting this way, but that other person is reacting completely differently? Why do I like things this way, but that other person doesn't care at all? It's literally a treasure hunt, and it gets easier the more you practice. It's like a game, it's like a sport. The more you practice, the easier it's gonna be for you to see what you're bringing to the table. Okay, so that's sort of the easy version of the linking game. Warm up, stretching, practice that a little every day, and it'll become a lot easier to start spotting some patterns in the way you like to think. 
in the way you like doing things, in the way you like sorting through this world. Now I sort of want to try the big boy version of the same thing. Let me scoot back so we have some room here. Organic chemistry, video editing, video animation, Spanish, salsa dancing, personality type, improvising on the piano. These six things are connected in some way. I just haven't quite figured out how though. Like with every person, there's things I like, things I think are cool. Oh, skateboarding's cool, rock climbing's cool, movies are cool. But those six things, when they popped up in my life, I had a completely different reaction than normal. There's something about those six things that works really, really well with my brain. I got really obsessed with them. I started studying them, practicing them in a completely irrational way. Everyone hated organic chemistry, but for me, it felt like the most fun, wonderful class in the entire world. I was doing practice problems for fun during the summer, even after my whole year ended because I missed it so much. Spanish. I wasn't particularly good at it for the first four or five years. I couldn't even really speak after high school. That being said, right when when I started learning Spanish, I felt something was different. I was like, ooh, I need to become fluent with this, even though most of my friends don't use it at all. I practiced it, studied it so much on my own time. I looked for native speakers I could practice with every single week. Even right now, I'm taking classes every single week to keep it up. Video editing, I think I started when I was 10 years old. I had the same exact feeling I had with Spanish, where I was like, this is such a fun puzzle to crack. I'd spend hours and hours figuring out the program, tweaking little things. I'd watch movies and before I knew what L cuts and J cuts, I'd, I noticed them and I was like, oh, I need to try that in my edits. I also used to make stop motion videos. I was like 12 years old and I would sit in my room for hours, literally working on videos that would take months to complete, like literally two, three months. I'd sit in my room for hours and hours and hours, taking lots of pictures, trying to recreate some of the angles and pacing I saw in the movies I really, really liked. Salsa dancing, something I found completely randomly three years ago, but then suddenly out of nowhere, the same exact thing happened. Suddenly I was going to every single class and social thing I could, even if it was multiple times a week. I was taking notes in my binder. I was calling my friends, seeing what new moves I could learn. Improvising on the piano, studying personality types, the stories I have are all basically the same. Other things I let pass me by, I just go, oh, that's cool. But something about these things worked so well with my brain where I was like, I need to dedicate myself to this. It doesn't matter if other people tell me to, if it makes sense, if it takes some investment, if no one else cares or gets excited in the same way, I need to get really good at this. I need to figure this out. Right now, I wanna see how these things connect? What is it that I'm drawn to? What is it about these things that excite me, that energize me all in the same way? I did this activity a couple months ago. I don't fully remember what I found. Let's see if I can remind myself what the connections are between these six things. These are pretty disconnected. All right, well, the first thing I'm noticing here is that five out of the six things on this list are very expressive. If you look at what these things produce, the end product, they're all sort of creative. They're all a little artsy, communication related. Videos, Spanish, dance, personality, music. They're all sort of expressive. Imagine if I had rock climbing, physics, history on this list. Those are not really expressive or creative in the same way these things are. All right, let's try to look again, figure this out. All right, well, the second thing that seems pretty obvious to me is that each of these six things have quite a bit of structure in them, quite a bit of technique or frameworks that are involved to get really good at them. Yes, at a glance, they seem creative, artsy, expressive, but if you really look at what it takes to get good at Spanish, get good at dance, really learn, study, brains, personality type, piano, music theory, video, editing, there's quite a bit of technical structure behind these things and not the type of technique that takes a lot of physical energy. I'm horrible at those things, but this type of things that take a lot of mental energy, uh, precision, accuracy. You know, video editing, you're really slicing things down to the millisecond. With salsa dancing, if you turn your your wrist just slightly this way, the move won't work. Organic chemistry, piano, Spanish, you can't just make stuff up. There's quite a few rules. You have to learn the internal logic, the structure really, really well to start 
playing with it, getting creative with it. Now that I think about it, that's actually pretty specific to my personality type. There's sort of two sides of me where I love taking a step back, looking at the big picture. Hey, how can we look at this from a new perspective? How can we think about this from a different angle? But there's also a side of me that loves zooming in a lot, splitting hairs, getting really, really detail oriented and really figuring out what do we know? What can we really get accurate with? What can we really get precise with? I love things that blend the two, zooming really far in, but also that require taking a step back. To make a good video, to play well on the piano, to answer the OCHEM question correctly, to do the dance move properly, to speak correctly in Spanish, you have to zoom in a lot to the grammar, to the music theory, to the chemistry, to the cuts. There's a lot of details, complexity that I like, but it's not just details. While you're thinking about the grammar, you also have to think about what you want to say. While you're cutting, splicing all these clips, you also have to look at the flow of the video, how it makes people feel, what's the pace like. To be really good at these things, it takes a lot of zooming in, zooming out over and over again really, really fast. The next thing that's standing out to me is the social component. You don't speak Spanish by yourself. You don't dance salsa by yourself. You don't make videos for yourself. There's no point in studying personality types if you're not using it to help your relationships, your connection. These things all unlocked pretty dramatic new possibilities for me for connection, for self-discovery, which, you know, if you've seen on this channel, I really like those things a lot. Thinking back, part of why I got so obsessed was when I saw the possibility of who I could be. Wait, you're saying if I practice this, I can speak Spanish? That's crazy. Wait, you're saying if I practice this, I can dance like that? That self-discovery component, especially in order to connect better with other people, I love that. It almost feels like nothing can stop me if I find those things that let me do that. There's actually a huge social connection component I'm realizing right now. I'm not the most social person. I like keeping to myself. In most contexts, I feel like I can't express myself very well, show my personality very well. And so I usually just sort of like, <laughs> okay. That's why it sort of stands out to me how different I am when I'm talking about personality or YouTube or Spanish or dancing. I become a lot more social. That's usually actually how I connect through these interests where I get to show more of my personality, where I feel more comfortable expressing myself. I'm unsure whether these things help me connect more or they're actually maybe just helping me connect in general. Maybe that's why I like getting so good at them because it's my main way of communicating the things I normally can't communicate about myself. Whoa. That's sort of intense. Um, all right, the last thing that's coming to mind when I look at this list. I think teaching might be more exciting for me, more important to me than I thought. I like analyzing things. I like problem solving. I like being smart. But I'm noticing I really don't like being smart by myself. If I can't share information, make it practical, helpful for other people, if other people aren't able to see what I'm noticing, I get really bothered. When a mechanic fixes your car, you have no idea what they did. They're experts, they're really smart, but I actually don't like being that type of smart. I remember in college, I'd be with my friends or I'd be out social dancing and I'd see other people frustrated, confused with salsa dancing or plunking on the piano, trying to figure out their favorite pop song. And I would suddenly leave all of my friends, run over to a stranger, go, hey, I know this is a little weird. I know you don't know me, but like, how long have you been playing piano? How long have you been salsa dancing? Yeah, it's really tricky. I remember how confusing it was when I first started. Have you ever tried learning some chords? Would you be interested in learning one of the first salsa dance moves I learned? It's really, really cool. It looks complicated, but it's actually really, really simple. All my friends from afar would be so confused. What the heck is Eric doing? Why is he talking to all these strangers? But I didn't really care. I knew what it felt like to be a beginner. I knew how much I had wanted to figure out those things. I was so excited about helping someone else unlock something for themselves within themselves. Suddenly I become this super extroverted super social, altruistic person I sometimes have trouble recognizing. Okay, so a week has gone by since I did that activity for this video. I hope you can see how the linking game, trying to uncover these patterns, these preferences, these tendencies you have, it's really, really helpful. Some of the things I found from this activity the last couple months, I realized I'm a lot more expressive, social, connection-oriented 
than I thought. That might not be surprising to you because you see my YouTube videos, but like off camera, that's actually pretty surprising to me. I'm learning a lot about what types of activities, contexts I like, right? I like a specific blend where there's a lot of precision, accuracy, splitting hairs, details, but also a lot of free thinking, creativity, sort of artsiness. When there's a lot of creativity and complexity involved, my brain lights up, especially when it involves discovering a new side of myself. I am way more obsessed with self-discovery than I thought. I didn't realize like that's actually the thing that gets me fixated, that gets me really excited, that gets me doing all sorts of crazy things to figure out or to share with other people. I also don't think I've been appreciating the teaching side of myself, that that's a superpower I have, that I'm extra drawn to sharing information, making complicated things simple than other people might be. It's encouraging to see more clearly what I have to offer, but it's also freaking me out a little bit. The complicated thing I love teaching, I love sharing, it's not actually how to grow your YouTube channel, even though it very much applies to growing your YouTube channel. I'm not actually excited by, motivated by, the idea of a thousand of you cashing in huge YouTube paychecks, hitting a million subscribers. I really couldn't care less about that. It's the self-discovery part. How can you actually figure out who you are, what your personality is, and then unlock that. How can I help you uncover your superpowers, figure out your perfect fit, your special way of connecting, expressing yourself in this world? If you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. Having some real talk, I think that there's some changes, some tweaks coming to this YouTube channel in a good way, in a, in a really exciting way. I've been feeling the past couple months like there might be a bigger way, a better way for me to highlight the things I really care about, do the things I'm really, really, really good at. Don't worry, I'm not ditching my YouTube niche, I'm not destroying my content smoothie. It's all gonna be very similar, just tweaked to help more people, to fit my personality better. I'm all about practicing what I preach. As you can see, it's really complicated to design a YouTube channel that's a great fit for you, to communicate in a way that highlights your strengths, makes sense, resonates to strangers. My self-discovery process, it's not perfect, it's messy. The linking game, it's messy, it's complicated. Sorting through your insecurities, designing your content smoothie, it's complicated, it's messy. <laughs> but it's also so fun. The fact that you're down for these complicated, messy, but super important adventures, I appreciate you so much freaking much. You are at the change maker of your own life. Let's think more deeply. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, peace. Bye.